Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30 minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Jonathan Evans. And I'm Ashley Thompson. This program is aimed at English learners, so we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. Today on the program, you will hear from Dan Friedel, John Russell, Brian Lynn, and Dorothy Gundy. Later, Katie Weaver and Ashley will present the next part in our series on America's national parks. But first, here is Dan Friedel. International sports organizations are making or considering rules concerning competition. By transgender athletes. Last week, the international swimming group, FINA, announced a rule that would bar most transgender women from competing. The measure requires transgender people to have begun their transition medically before the age of 12. A transgender woman is a person who was born with male sex organs. But identifies as female. Some transgender people take medicine to lower their male or female hormones. The hormones greatly affect how the body develops. After FINA announced its decision, other organizations followed. The organizations that run field hockey, rugby, triathlon, and cycling. Are making new rules or updating old ones. FIFA, the international soccer organization, also said it is re examining its rules on gender. The International Olympic Committee, IOC, said late last week that it would not make a decision on the issue. An IOC spokesperson said, That the organization can't come forward with one rule, one short rule that fits everybody. The group said such action is the responsibility of individual federations and individual sports. A past Olympic policy permitted transgender women who had been on hormone therapy for at least 12 months to compete with women. The group that runs track and field competitions, known as World Athletics, is run by former Olympic gold medalist Sebastian Coe of Great Britain. Coe said World Athletics would examine its policies on transgender and intersex athletes by the end of 2022. If World Athletics follows the FINA rules, It could also keep runners Castor Semenya of South Africa and Christine Mboma of Namibia from competing. Both are top runners who race against women, but have sex development differences that result in higher levels of testosterone than most women. Ross Tucker is a researcher for World Rugby. By the end of the year, he said, World Athletics will have announced a policy that is very similar to swimming, and they will say that if ever a person has gone through male puberty and has obtained the advantages associated with testosterone, they can't compete in women's sports. Tucker also noted that it is likely all of the sports groups will face legal challenges to their new rules. The court costs may prevent other smaller sports groups from making new policies that follow FINA. Coe said FINA spent $1 million in legal costs to create the new rule. He said World Athletics also has money to deal with court cases, but smaller sports organizations may not. The gender of an American swimmer. Was in the news during the recent college national championships. Leah Thomas is a transgender swimmer who attended the University of Pennsylvania. 
She started hormone therapy while in college, which means she entered male puberty and started to build muscle like a male. She competed in college swimming against men for three years. Thomas won multiple events at the Ivy League Women's Championships in early 2022 and then won the national 500-yard race in March. Some swimmers were upset they lost to a swimmer who, until recently, competed as a man. Thomas said she wants to try to make the next Olympics in Paris in 2024. USA Swimming has a policy that says swimmers competing in women's events must be able to show a low level of testosterone for at least 36 months. When the 2021-2022 school year started, Thomas had only been doing hormone therapy for about two years. The NCAA, the organization that runs college sports in the U.S., did not have the USA swimming policy in place this year. Thomas would not have been able to swim if it had. When FINA made its announcement, USA Swimming said it will take time to understand the possible effects of the rule on its own policies. Tucker, the rugby analyst, said the news surrounding Thomas seems to be the main reason for the new FINA policy. Before Thomas made the news and expressed an interest in the Olympics, there were few transgender athletes good enough to win events against top competition. He said, people do not know how they feel about an issue until they are forced to deal with it directly. Leah Thomas made this real, he said. Based on her recent times, Thomas would qualify for the U.S. Olympic trials, which are set for June 2024. Olympic sports leaders met in Colorado last week on the 50th anniversary of the U.S. law known as Title IX. That law bans sex discrimination in any education program or activity that receives federal money. Susan Lyons, a leader of the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee, USOPC, said, It is not the group's job to set a transgender policy. But she said the organization should present a clear point of view. There are over 40 international sports organizations that will at some point need to make rules. Lyons said no one is begging the USOPC to make a statement. But on the other hand, we are the leaders of the Olympic movement in the U.S., so we have to have a point of view. She said, It is not likely everyone will agree with the USOPC's opinion. Also last week, President Joe Biden's administration proposed new rules that would protect lesbian, gay, transgender, and queer students from discrimination under Title IX. Miguel Cardona, the head of the Department of Education, said, Standing up for equal access and inclusion is as important as ever. I'm Dan Friedel. A Chinese spacecraft has taken images covering all of Mars after circling the planet more than 1,300 times since early last year, state media reported this week. China's Tianwen-1, a spacecraft without people on it, reached the Red Planet in February 2021. It was the country's first mission there. A robotic rover has since been sent to the surface while an orbiter studied the planet from space. Among the images taken from space were China's first photographs of the Martian South Pole. The South Pole is where almost all of the planet's water resources are locked. 
In 2018, an orbiter operated by the European Space Agency discovered water under the ice of the planet's South Pole. Finding water below the surface is important for studying the planet's ability to provide for life. Such a finding could also be helpful for any human exploration there. Other Tianwen-1 images include photographs of the Valles Marineris, a 4,000-kilometer-long canyon, and an area in the north of Mars called Arabia Terra. It has many impact craters, holes in the ground caused by meteorites or other objects. Tianwen-1 also sent back detailed images of the edge of the large Maunder crater, as well as a view of the 18,000-meter Escrius Mons, a large volcano first detected by NASA's Mariner 9 spacecraft more than 50 years ago. I'm John Russell. Major U.S. technology companies have expressed support for employees affected by the Supreme Court's recent decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. But some activists and lawmakers fear the business activities of those companies could result in legal action against people suspected of violating federal or state laws. Last week, the High Court overturned the 1973 Roe v. Wade decision. That ruling recognized a woman's constitutional right to have an abortion. An abortion is a medical procedure that ends a pregnancy. The Guttmacher Institute, an organization that supports abortion rights, says 26 American states are likely to ban abortion without Roe v. Wade. Some states, including Texas, Oklahoma, and Idaho, have laws that permit private citizens to bring legal actions against anyone who assists a woman seeking an abortion. Technology companies, including Google, Apple, Meta, Amazon, and Microsoft, reacted to the decision by offering benefits aimed at supporting their employees. All of these companies have announced they will cover costs for workers who need to travel to other areas to legally receive abortion services. But concerns have been raised that these technology companies might not protect private user data that could be used to identify and possibly prosecute people seeking ways to get an abortion. Clear examples from the past have demonstrated that whenever personal data is tracked or stored, there is always a risk that the information could be misused or abused. Privacy groups and some lawmakers have warned that different forms of personal data could be provided to law enforcement and used in legal cases linked to new state abortion laws. This could include location tracking data, text messages, emails, and Internet search histories collected by technology companies. Cynthia Conti Cook is a technology specialist with the nonprofit Ford Foundation. She told Reuters news agency, It is very likely that there's going to be requests made to those tech companies for information related to search histories and websites visited. Such data could also be used against individuals who assist the people seeking an abortion. And activist groups fear private data on users 
could also be bought by people who might be paid to go after people seeking or assisting with abortions. Alexandra Reeve Givens heads the Washington-based Center for Democracy and Technology, a nonprofit privacy group. She told the Associated Press she thinks the Supreme Court's ruling opens the door for law enforcement and other people and groups to seek massive amounts of private data from citizens. In a statement, Givens called on technology companies to take steps to safeguard such information. In this new environment, tech companies must step up and play a crucial role in protecting women's digital privacy and access to online information, she said. Last week, four Democratic lawmakers accused Apple and Google of misleading millions of mobile phone users by permitting the collection and sale of their personal data to third parties. They called on federal agencies to investigate the matter. In their letter, the lawmakers said... Individuals seeking abortions and other reproductive health care will become particularly vulnerable to privacy harms. The letter added that groups were already selling, licensing, and sharing the location information of people that visit abortion providers to anyone with a credit card. Apple and Google had no immediate comment on the letter. Other major technology companies have also not provided specific plans for how they plan to deal with official requests from governments or law enforcement agencies for private user data. In general, Technology companies have suggested they will obey abortion-related data requests unless they see them as too wide-ranging, the AP reports. Meta, for example, has pointed to its online transparency report. It states that the company fulfills government requests for user information only where we have a good-faith belief that the law requires us to do so. Privacy rights activists say that kind of policy does not go far enough. They say technology companies need to work to strengthen and expand the use of privacy-protecting encryption to securely protect user data. Privacy groups have also called on companies to limit the collection, sharing, and sale of information that can identify a woman's pregnancy situation. They have also urged the industry to stop using technology tools that aim to guess whether users are likely to be pregnant. I'm Dorothy Gundy. And I'm Brian Lynn. The state of Minnesota is known as the land of 10,000 lakes. Our national park today protects four major ones. The National Park Service says water is the foundation of this wild and remote place. Welcome to Voyagers National Park. You must have a strong desire to see Voyagers to make the visit. It is not an easy place to get to. Much of the park is accessible only by boat. The Voyagers for whom the park was named understood this well. Voyager is a French word 
meaning traveler. In the 1700s, French Canadian fur traders started coming to the area seeking beaver fur and other animal coats. The product was in great demand in Europe. The fur traders traveled to and from the area for business. They took canoes to get around. The boat trips were often long and hard. The waters and wild animals created great dangers. Voyager life became legendary. The men were seen as brave adventurers, but they were also romantics. They became known for singing songs as they navigated the waterways. Of course, the Voyagers were not the first people in the area that is now Voyagers National Park. People first arrived there about 10,000 years ago. They were mostly nomadic and did not settle permanently. In the last 1,000 years, Native American tribes settled in the area, including the Cree, Monsoni, and Assiniboine. The Ojibwa were the residents of more modern times. They served as guides to the fur traders. They also provided canoes and other important items. Voyagers National Park covers almost 88,500 hectares. About half of that surface is water. Creating the park was a long and difficult process. Minnesotan state lawmakers first proposed the idea in 1891. But it was 80 years before Congress established the park. President Richard Nixon signed the bill that finally established Voyagers as a national park in 1971. The park protects four major Minnesotan lakes. Rainy Lake, Cabotogama, Namakin, and Sand Point. Rainy is the biggest. It covers about 930 square kilometers. It is a popular fishing lake. Fishers may catch walleye, northern pike, and smallmouth bass. In the winter, thick ice covers Rainy Lake. Visitors can walk and drive on it. Rainy Lake meets with Namakin and Cabotogama Lakes at Kettle Falls. A dam was built on the falls in the early 20th century. Along with it came the Kettle Falls Hotel. It housed traders, loggers, and visitors searching for gold in the area. The hotel fell into disuse in more modern times, but in 1987, the National Park Service made repairs and improvements to the building. It is the only indoor place to stay in the area. Nature and art meet at the Ellsworth Rock Gardens in Voyagers National Park. Park officials describe the gardens as the showplace of Lake Cabotogama. A carpenter and artist from Chicago named Jack Ellsworth built a summer home on the lake in the 1940s. He then designed, built, and cared for the rock gardens over 20 years. 
The artist also created garden sculptures from native stone. There were once about 200 rock sculptures. Ellsworth stopped caring for the gardens in his older age. When the National Park Service took control of the land, the gardens needed repair and restoration. Today, it is an interesting place to visit within the park. Voyager's National Park may be best seen at night. Officials there like to say that half of the park comes out after dark. Certainly, much of its magic does. The most spectacular light display on Earth is sometimes visible at Voyagers. The Aurora Borealis, or Northern Lights, appear periodically in the night sky as streaks or clouds of light. The lights are most often white or soft green. However, they sometimes deepen into colors like yellow, red, blue, and even purple. The northern lights are not always immediately recognizable, but keep watching. If the light you see comes and goes, or intensifies over time, you may be witnessing the aurora borealis. Along with the northern lights, Voyagers is a great place to see meteors. These bursts of light cross the area's black skies mostly in August, during the Perseids meteor shower. Meteors, often called shooting stars, form when pieces of ice and dust cross into Earth's atmosphere and begin to burn brightly. The display of natural fireworks is a great way to finish the day at Voyagers National Park. You can fall asleep under the stars and be sure that more extraordinary nature awaits you when day breaks in Voyagers National Park. I'm Katie Weaver. And that's our program for today. Listen again tomorrow to learn English through stories from around the world. I'm Jonathan Evans. And I'm Ashley Thompson.